Hi my sweet little noodles, my name is Brittany and today we're going to be doing a reading vlog for romance for the magical readathon. It's Brittany bitch. If you've not really checked out my TBR video for the magical readathon, I highly recommend that you do because this is going to be the romance reading vlog. So this is going to contain two books. I don't know, I'm holding up two things. It's two. Two books. So one of them is going to be Queen Bee, which is a young adult historical romance that I have had on my TBR for quite some time since it's actually a neck alley arc that I was supposed to read like literally forever ago. This book fit the prompt for the tarot card. It looked the most like the high priestess card and that's why I decided to just go ahead and choose this book. It was the perfect fit. And the other book I'll be reading for this is Delivery Girl. And this fits the prompt for an author by the name of Lily. This was literally the only book that looked fucking appetizing. And this is a adult smutty romance to my understanding. And it's about a delivery girl in Minnesota. So I'm looking for a good dick down time in Minnesota. I don't know if that's gonna be what this is, but I have it on audio and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot tomorrow. And I will fill you guys in on my progress. But so far I have not touched either one of these books, but I do plan on reading Delivery Girl first just because I'm gonna get the audio out of the way because I have a lot of physical books I need to read this month but at least if I get some of the audiobooks out of the way I will just feel more accomplished and also I just want a really good fun smutty time and I don't really think the young adult version is going to give me that so I'm gonna go straight to the adult romance so we decided to do something a little bit different and go to movies on the lawn at dick's park which is in raleigh and they have a couple of food trucks there and you end up watching a movie on the lawn with a whole bunch of people and they were showing shrek so we decided to go ahead and give it a shot and honestly it was really fun it was definitely a little bit hot but once it cooled off it was great it was just like unbearably humid and so even sitting on the blanket in the grass my butt got very very wet But I will say that the arepas I got were absolutely delicious, but we were disappointed that they did not have their dessert truck that they were supposed to, which was a brownie truck. But overall, would 100% recommend. Good morning, noodles. I just wanted to give you guys an update on Delivery Girl, which is just not what I was expecting. I don't know why I kept thinking it took place in Minnesota. Like if I actually would have like paid attention in the fucking summary, I would know that most of this book takes place actually in LA. I was really going into this hoping for like a small town Minnesota vibe, but apparently like it's supposed to be part of the series and like the hockey player in this Ryan Pierce, he plays for like a Minnesota team at the moment. And that's why it's called like the Minnesota Ice Series. And so far we have not been in Minnesota one iota. So it's just not really like the vibe I was going for, but also like I feel like this premise is just like entirely fucking ridiculous. And like I'm okay with a ridiculous romance. Like that works for me and that's kind of what I was going for, but like this is almost like so far-fetched and ridiculous. And at first it was funny, but then I was like, you really made a relationship out of that? Just seems weird. Our main character, Andy, I don't remember her name. I swear to God it's Andy. She, <laughs> long story short, she works for her dad at his pizzeria. She goes to deliver a pizza late night to this really big ass mansion. She hears two people having sex and then Ryan Pierce, who's a very famous hockey player, he answers the door I, in a towel. I, I don't remember if it was naked or in a towel, but he answers the door. She assumes it was him having sex. We later find out that it was his brother and his brother's fiance having sex in the front room. He's just happening to be living there because he's basically trying out for like a different team in LA, like a different, I don't know what the team is. I'm not a big hockey person, but like it's a team in LA and he's working with like an agent trying to get signed with her to like work for that team. And our main character, Andy, she is trying to be a comedian like she's trying to be the next Sarah Silverman the next Whitney Cummings I don't know uh the next Ali Wong perhaps listen I, the only thing I have a complaint about that's not true I have many complaints my biggest complaint is like for a comedian or like a wannabe comedian this girl's dialogue is not funny she's not funny at all she doesn't have really funny thoughts she is just incredibly naive and frustrating and they're relationship is driving me nuts like honestly this is looking like not good like I'm not happy <laughs> with what's going down Ryan and Andy are like constantly in this talk of war of like do we like each other do we not like each other and it's so fucking obvious that they both like each other but like Ryan is not supposed to be in a relationship because his agent wants him single because like single players sell better and like that's literally it and Andy is just like this really dumb naive little fucking bitch who thinks that like oh there's no way like this big hockey player could like me listen we all have insecurities I respect that. But like, can we have insecurities on like one page? And then can you actually pay attention to what he's doing? Like he obviously really likes you. Are you that fucking dumb that you're like missing it? I just feel like she is like low key, like an Allie Hazelwood protagonist. She's driving me nuts. I hate really naive women who keep like going back and forth. Like, oh, he likes me. Oh, he doesn't like me. He's literally said he wants to be with you. Like, I don't know what else you want to hear. So she agrees to be his date for his brother's wedding in two months. 
and then like that's it but like it's so obvious they both like each other and I just feel like that whole plot is just really frustrating. I would be fine with the plot of like his agent trying to break them up or something but them like not deciding what they want to do and knowing they both like each other they're both really sexually attracted and then like not acting on it and then acting like <laughs> the other one doesn't want anything to do with them. It's just incredibly frustrating in their relationships. Seesaw, it's just, it's a seesaw. I don't know what to do, I'm annoyed. Anyway, when I finish this book, I'll give you guys my full thoughts. But so far, it's not looking good. I'm honestly pretty annoyed with this right now. I'm very annoyed with both of the protagonists. And again, for a comedian, she's not fucking funny. And I think it's fine that we don't get to like see her like comedy acts, like that's fine for me. But like as a character, she really doesn't have anything going on. And for him as well, he's just a hockey player from Minnesota. Like I just feel like they're very flat characters. Nobody in this is really standing out to me. And I especially was like looking forward to this because it seemed different. Like I don't know, a comedian and a hockey player. It's not something I've ever read before, but like this comedian is drop dead nothing. The only funny part was the beginning. Like the beginning opening scene was funny. She, she literally like backs in his car or whatever. It's hilarious, okay? But like other than that, this is just not working for me like as a relationship, especially because this is a romance. I need something else and the plots are not doing it. So anyway, when I finish that, I'll let you guys know, but don't hold your breath. So I finally finished Delivery Girl and I have to say that this was a measly two star read. I lovingly gave it two stars and rounded up just because I really enjoyed the concept but this book just did not work for me and it could just be the author's writing style, it could be the lack of plot, who knows. So Andy works for a family pizzeria in LA even though she actually went to school to get an accounting degree for her father and even though she really wants to actually be a comedian like an Ali Wong or whatever right. She wants to be like this really famous female comedian, she loves comedy etc. And one night she delivers a smiley face pizza to a very famous hockey player named Brian Pierce and he was smitten with the pizza delivery girl and here we are. The first couple interactions between these characters was actually really funny and definitely was like the romantic comedy aspect that the author like basically says the book is. Like it was very like rom com and it was very funny but like an actual connection between these characters? No. Like could they have a one night stand? Sure. But like are they gonna be together for the rest of their lives? I don't think so. Unfortunately these characters were entirely too bland for me. Ryan just plays hockey and Andy wants to be a comedian. There's really not not a whole lot there. There's not a whole lot of substance. I couldn't tell you another personality trait of either one of them. I was also incredibly frustrated with like the indecisiveness of both of the characters in like regards to their relationship and like deciding if they wanted to take it to the next level and like the level of miscommunication and confusion between these characters for like the 70% of this fucking book was just absolutely mind-boggling numb. Like I cannot deal with it. It was awful. It was so frustrating to the point where I wanted to DNF this book. Like I really wanted to put this down because I was so annoyed with them going back and forth and being like oh well she said this and well he said this and I'm like can you both just like fucking talk about your fucking feelings because I'm so tired of this dumb trope. Their teeter-totter emotions was just purely exhausting. Also, I'm not a really big fan of sports romances, but I wanted to see some fucking hockey action. I mean, the only reason I even knew that he played hockey is because it was fucking mentioned and he was trying to find an agent in LA to move to LA. Otherwise, there are no other hockey references. We're not like seeing him play, nothing like that, nothing of the sort. And I just wanted a little bit more of like his actual sport. I mean, we at least get to see Andy doing comedy, but like I wanted more of his hockey player -y thing because especially this is called the Minnesota Ice Series. I was expecting this to be in small town Minnesota, icy. I don't know, I was expecting like a fucking like a hockey thing like I was expecting to see people play hockey. 95% of this takes place in LA so just go into that knowing that because I was very upset about that in the first place like I just really was wanting a like small town Minnesota sports romance that's what I was expecting and that's not what I got. The 5% that were in Minnesota is just for Ryan's brother's wedding that's fucking it. Also there was a lot of like moments where this character mainly our female character Andy is extremely fucking dumb. I'm just extremely frustrated with how women are written because she somehow knows that Ryan Pierce is a very famous hockey player. Listen, I don't know a damn hockey player. I don't follow hockey. I don't know anything, but I at least know that the little black thing that they push around is called a fucking puck. And she couldn't even like remember what that was called. If you truly know who a hockey player is, you probably have a pretty deep obsession with the game. You still at least like to watch it. You obviously follow the players. Like I like football. I watch football. I know who the players are, okay? So I would know, oh, hey, that's a very famous football player. But if you don't know, then how would you know? And if you knew that he was a famous hockey player, then you know what the fuck a puck is called. And you know more about the fucking game. And she was just like oblivious to what goes on. <sighs> Anyway, this is just a big issue I see with a lot of heroines is like they know nothing about sports, for example. I find naive, dumb 
female protagonist really fucking frustrating and I just can't really get behind it. I'm not sure this is the author for me and I don't think I'll be continuing on in the Minnesota Ice series because where's the Minnesota and where's the fucking ice, okay? So I think I'm just probably gonna be done with that. And I'm gonna move on to Queen Bee, which is the last book in this reading vlog. And this is a YA historical romance and I don't know much else. I haven't looked into this since I originally requested it. It just looks like a good time. So I'm going to this pretty blind and hopefully this is a lot better than Delivery Girl. Hello darlings. I would like to fill you in on Queen Bee, which I am now 50% of the way into and this is so far a slap. This is a YA historical romance. So our main character at the moment is 18 and the chapters are going back and forth in time. So we have it three years prior and current day. In the past, our main character, Ella, had this terrible friend named Poppy who basically ruined her reputation. And now Ella is out for revenge. So Ella went away to like a different finishing school and she disappeared from society for many, many years. And now she's back and she's back as Lyra Whitley. So she has a completely different name. She looks little bit different. Nobody so far has recognized her and this bitch is out for revenge. She's gonna fuck over Poppy and fuck that bitch up. I really love that. I love revenge in books. I just feel like it's one of those things that I just crave in books and it's kind of hard to find in my opinion because a lot of times if there is revenge involved it's on like a villain side and we're not usually seeing from a villain's perspective but I love a good revenge story. And Lady Ella is really giving it to us and I really like seeing the back and forth so I like seeing like how it built up to this point and then we're seeing her in the future taking Poppy down. I mean just even like small little pranks. No matter what she wants to fuck this bitch up like she was fucked up okay so I'm not sure if she's gonna go like straight full ruined reputation with like a boy I don't know but so far I'm loving the revenge and and this one scene they're at this ball held in her honor and they're like eating a cream puff made by like the duchess and her specific cream puff is filled with mayonnaise and nobody else's is so she ends up like freaking out and like going to the bathroom and, like throwing up and throwing up all over somebody else's dress I love like little revenge stories like that. It just feels very like Mean Girls. You know what I mean? It reminds me so much of like a historical romance Mean Girls at the moment and I'm really here for it. And the reason why Poppy basically ruined Ella's reputation, she really wants the Duke's son, Keston, and Keston doesn't want anything to do with Poppy and Keston and Ella were friends. And at this point in time, it's quite obvious that Poppy is delusional and thinks that like her and Keston are like gonna get married and he just really does not care for her at all. Actually what's happening is that he is kind of falling for our main character, Ella slash Lyra. So we're going to see like the romantic tension between the Duke's son and our main character. And also knowing the whole time that like she's going to ruin Poppy's reputation for fucking her over in the first place because there really was like no reason for it other than straight up jealousy. Like she saw how close they were and she is a jealous little petty ass bitch. So that's all I'm gonna tell you so far, but I'm hoping to finish this in the next couple of days and then give you guys my full report. I'm very curious to see how she's gonna ruin Poppy's reputation, like completely. Like how is she really gonna like nail this bitch in her coffin, you know? So once I figure it out, I'll get back to you guys in hopefully just a few days. So I finally finished Queen Bee and I really like this book. I'm gonna give it four stars. I had read from this author before, so I really didn't know what to expect when I was going into this book, but I just was expecting a young adult historical romance that centered around revenge. And it definitely gave that. This is set in Regency era England and we are following our main character, Ella. Now this book does switch off chapter perspectives between Ella and Lyra. Long story short, they are the same person, but Lyra is the present day version of Ella because Ella's childhood best friend, Poppy, ruined her reputation three years prior. All because she wanted to be with the Duke's son, Keston, who was really good friends with Ella. And so she basically ruins Ella. She's not really welcome into society. So she has to go off to like a girl's finishing school for three years. And then she comes back to plot her revenge as Lyra Whitley. And then the back and forth chapters explain the present day and then going back to the past and how she came to be and what happened, what transpired, the people she meets. I mean, that's, I think where a lot of the meat of the story is, is in the past. And that's why I really like the past chapters because we really get to see the childhood friends thing and see how her and the Duke really were good friends three years ago and how she's been able to deceive them as Lyra Whitley now. 
which is a really good point because I hate that in books when like logically there's no way that they could not have known that was her but it makes sense that in three years is a really big point in her life too as a late bloomer that she would look completely differently and then she dyed her hair she was dressing different she's her name it makes sense if you haven't seen somebody for how many years and you thought they were basically gone from the world that like yeah that could happen so to me that was believable and it worked for me for other people it may not but like for me this is one of the instances where like I was like okay that makes more sense it's been three years her voice has changed she's changed her hair is a different color entirely she's dressing different she's acting different all those things I love that revenge was a theme and that Ella's basically gonna get even with Poppy for like ruining her life and she's gonna do the same exact thing to her my issue with the story is I feel like Poppy did not really get what she deserved in my personal opinion I really wanted to see her completely ruined and I feel like the ending was very very quick like it was very quickly wrapped up and I would have liked to revel a little bit more in Poppy's demise and also see more of a plot for Poppy because I feel like this this book actually could have like taken 50 more pages and kind of like went over more of a plot to destroy Poppy because I feel like it wasn't not that it wasn't thought out very well from Ella's perspective I just feel like I really wanted to see like more terrible things happen to Poppy because she was such a little bitch like I really wanted to see her humiliated because it seemed like she always was able to pick herself back up and like get support every single time something happened and I just really wanted to see her like totally and completely like emotionally destroyed like see her like sobbing in a bathroom or something I wanted to see her being fucked over you know what I mean and I don't feel like I really got to see that. So my enjoyment of the revenge was definitely ruined um, once I realized that that was not going to happen. But I also really liked the romance between our Duke's son Keston and Ella, our main character, because they obviously really liked each other back in the day, but there wasn't ever like romantic feelings. They just had a really strong friendship. And then now obviously how many years later, she realizes like, wow, this dude is hot. And they both have a hoss for each other. And I really liked that that was never denied. And you could definitely feel the palpable tension between both of them. And they both really liked each other. And I, I enjoyed that. So definitely the romance part of it was there as well. And her feelings basically kind of got in the way of her revenge plot, which I guess could explain the fact that like nothing really else happened to Poppy, but I would have liked to see her get fucked. It just kind of reminds me of like that TikTok meme going around. <laughs> But that's exactly how I feel. Okay, but we really did have some really nice side characters. Like Church and Zia, namely, were really good side characters. I think that were nicely done. And I really like their support for the narration. And it just worked for me. Like I really like this story. Overall, four stars. I would definitely recommend. If you're looking for like a fun historical romance that also has a lot of revenge in it, like just go for it. <sighs> we still have the last reading vlog to come out, which is the Dark Academia vlog. And honestly, I just don't know if I'm going to make it though, I have to say, because I have to finish it in a couple days here for the end of August to qualify so I don't really know if it's gonna happen but I'm gonna try my best so anyway look out for that but thank you guys for joining me for this vlog let me know if you read these books or authors down below and let me know your opinions I'd love to hear them and I'll talk to you guys next time